Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the ninth video in the STM32 timer series, and today we will cover the One Pulse mode. One Pulse mode is used to generate a pulse of a programmable length, in response to an external event. The pulse can start as soon as the input trigger arrives, or after a programmable delay. I have here a PDF explaining the different modes of STM32 timers, and here is the one pulse mode. I will leave the link to the PDF in the description of the video. As mentioned here, the capture compare registers value defines the pulse start time, and the auto reload value defines the end of the pulse. So basically, the effective pulse width is the difference between the auto reload, and the CCR values. We can also program the output to be a single pulse, or a continuous pulse train started by a single trigger. There is also a retriggerable option, where the pulse width will simply extend if a new trigger arrives before the output pulse goes low. We will cover everything shown here in this video. Let's see this in working, and we will start by creating a new project in the Cube IDE. I am using STM32F446RE. Give some name to the project and click finish. First of all, I am selecting the external crystal for the clock. The board has 8 MHz crystal on it, and let's run the system at 90 MHz clock. This will keep both the APB clocks at the same 90 MHz frequency, and we don't have to worry about which timer is connected to which APB bus. Let's configure the timer now. I am using timer 1 for this application. Select the slave mode as the trigger mode. In trigger mode, the counter starts at a rising edge of the trigger, but it does not reset. The trigger source is set to TI2FP2, that is the channel 2 of the timer. I am selecting channel 2 for the trigger because I am going to use channel 1 for the output. You can see the pin PA9 has been selected as the channel 2 pin, and this pin will be used as the input signal. Set channel 1 in the output compare mode. The pin PA8 will be used as the output pin for the timer, and here we will measure the one pulse generated by the timer. Make sure to enable the one pulse mode. Now we will configure the timer's parameters. Since the APB timer clock is at 90 MHz, a prescaler of 90 will bring the clock down to 1 MHz. Now the counter is counting at 1 MHz, so each count will take 1 microsecond. I am setting the auto reload to 50,000, so the counter period will be 50 milliseconds. This is also going to be the maximum pulse width, if we keep the capture compare register at minimum. The trigger polarity for the input signal is set to a rising edge. We will change the mode of the output compare later in the code. The pulse is basically the start time for the generated pulse, and I am keeping it at 10,000, that means 10 milliseconds. I have set the auto reload value to 50,000, which represents 50 milliseconds. This makes the effective pulse width of 40 milliseconds for the output signal. That's all we need to set up in the Cube MX, click save to generate the project. Let's see the connection first. Here the black wire is connected to the pin PA9, which is the input pin, and is connected to the button. The other end of the button is connected to the 3.3 volt pin on the board. So if I press the button, the pin PA9 will be pulled high to 3.3 volt, and the timer will recognize this as the trigger signal. The blue wire is connected to the pin PA8, which is the output pin on channel 1, and is connected to the logic analyzer, where we will monitor the output signal. Go to the timer initialization function. Here in the output compare mode, open the declaration of the predefined mode. Out of the listed modes, choose the PWM2 mode. This configuration is not available in Cube MX, so we need to manually do it here. Now in the main function, start the timer in the one pulse mode. 
I am using timer 1 channel 1. Let's build and run the code now. We will see the result in the logic analyzer. You can see whenever I am pressing the button, there is a pulse being generated in the output. If you see the pulse width, it is approximately 40 milliseconds. This is as per the setup we did for the timer. We set the pulse start to 10 milliseconds, and auto reload to 50 milliseconds, and the width is the difference between them, that is 40 milliseconds. Now let's see how to generate multiple pulses with a single trigger. Here in the timer configuration, the repetition counter was zero, and this would generate only one pulse. Now let's assume that I want to generate eight pulses. To do that, I need to update the value seven here. Let's see how this is working. You can see when I am pressing the button, multiple pulses are being generated. There are a total of 8 pulses, each having the width of 40 milliseconds. Let's say if we want to generate the pulse with a software trigger, instead of an external signal. For this purpose, we will use the internal trigger mechanism between the timers in STM32. Open the reference manual of your controller, and search for the internal trigger connection. Here you can see the timer 1 can be the slave to all these timers. And if I want to use the timer 2 as the master, I have to use the ITR1 signal to trigger the timer 1. Let's configure the timer 2 now. Here I am selecting the clock source as the internal clock. The timer 2 is also running at 90 MHz, and using the prescaler of 90 will bring down its clock to 1 MHz. Since the pulse width is set to 40 milliseconds in timer 1, I am going to choose the trigger period higher than that. The auto reload value of 60,000 will generate the trigger every 60 milliseconds. Set the trigger event selection to update event. Now in the timer 1, we will set the trigger source to ITR1. You can see the channel 2 pin, PA9 has been disabled, since the trigger has been changed to internal now. The rest of the configuration is unchanged. Let's generate the project now. Here the repetition counter has been changed back to zero. And let's change this to the PWM2 mode. We also need to start the timer too, so that it can generate the trigger. Let's build and run the project now. Here you can see the pulse is high for 40 milliseconds, and then low for 20 milliseconds. The timer 2 is generating the trigger every 60 milliseconds, and therefore we see the pulse being low for 20 milliseconds. So we saw how to use the one pulse mode with single and multiple pulses, and also how to use the software trigger to generate the pulse. Now we will see the retriggerable one pulse mode. In order to use the retriggerable mode, the timer must be set in the reset and trigger mode combined. But this option is not available in the F446RE. Actually the retriggerable mode is not available in many controllers, and therefore I am going to use the F750 discovery board for this purpose. I am going to use the same clock here, so that the configuration would remain the same. 
I am using timer 3. Here you see the combined reset trigger mode is available. The trigger source is selected as channel 2. The channel 1 is being used as the output compare mode. Enable the one pulse mode. Here you can see the two pins for timer 3. I am going to use another pin for channel 2, that is the pin PC7. This is because I have this pin available for connection. Here PC7 is going to be the input pin for channel 2, and PB4 is going to be the output pin. Since the clock is the same, I am keeping the same configuration. Make sure to keep the pulse zero for a triggerable mode to work. For the output compare, select the mode as retriggerable one pulse mode two. That's it for the configuration, click save to generate the project. I forgot to select an output pin, so let's select the pin PA0. The trigger signal will be provided by this pin PA0. Let's see the connection I made for this board. The black wire is connected between the pin PA0, and the timer input pin, PC7. The blue wire is connected to the timer output pin, PB4, and to the logic analyzer. In the main function, start the timer in one pulse mode. Now in the while loop, we will toggle the pin PA0. The total time before the pin goes high again is 40 milliseconds. Also keep in mind that the pulse width is set to 50 milliseconds, so the trigger will happen before the pulse goes low. And if the retriggerable mode works, the pulse width will be extended. Let's build and run this. Here you can see the pulse remain high, and never goes back to low. This means the retriggerable mode is indeed working. Let's change this delay, so that the trigger will take place every 60 milliseconds. Our pulse width is 50 milliseconds, so now we should see the pulse going low. Here you can see the pulse is high for 50 milliseconds and low for 12 milliseconds. The extra 2 milliseconds could be due to hull processing time. Let's change this to a total of 45 milliseconds delay. Now the pulse is again being extended, because the trigger is happening before the pulse goes low. If we try something similar without the retriggerable option being selected, this won't work. The pulse extends only when the retriggerable option is enabled. This is it for the video. I hope you understood the different configuration is the one pulse mode. I will continue the timer series with other modes in the upcoming videos. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.